angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy, eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting edge science and technology, conspiracy, discovery, special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Hi folks, this is Tom Horn once again from Skywatch Television and somehow, some way, we were able to con my good friend Steve Quayle into staying here and doing another program. Actually, you couldn't con Steve into doing anything. He stayed by his good graces. Hi Steve, good to see you Tom, again. Tom, well I'm excited to be here. Now, I don't mind, you know, I, I'm serious. I think you and I could sit here and talk for like <laughs> eight hours straight and people would be fascinated because we'd start here, go to another point in the universe, come back. <laughs> <laughs> where we were and we would be all over the place but by the end of the show people would be going how did they get from there to here but we're here you know? yeah uh, so it's which is interesting because we've been talking about portals we've been talking about CERN somehow we kind of create our own traversable wormholes <laughs> during a program we've been space and then come back to the beginning somehow uh, and and speaking of that that is what we left off the last program talking about portals now you've written these books uh, your newest book is Little Creatures, uh, and it's associated with that idea that there are doorways and that things can and do come through those doorways. You and I both believe not only do they come through the doorways, but a time is coming when prophecy says those gates are going to be fully opened, and then it's going to be like the floodgates of literally hell on earth is going to spill over into the earth. Do you think that what's going on right now at CERN, as we're sitting here talking, CERN has fired up its engines, it's, it's getting ready to conduct the most powerful experiments ever done on the face of the earth by colliding literally hundreds of millions of particles together at just under the speed of light. But, but CERN's own director, he said, you know, we, we may open a doorway and we may send something through it or something may come through from a parallel universe. What in the world are these guys trying to accomplish? Well, the late and the late friend of both of ours, David Flynn, when he would write about the Ouroboros, I was interesting that we would be talking about this because it, CERN in the dimension of the particle accelerator is, is a type actually of the Ouroboros. And the image that I was given one day when I was just praying about this out of the blue is imagine a, a time tunnel with two funnels, uh, CERN being on the earthly side and the Ouroboros being the heavenly side. And, and the Ouroboros, for those that don't understand, is this serpent swallowing its tail. It's, yes. a, it's an ancient symbol. It's an ancient symbol, but it's based on the Milky Way right. and its motion. But the point being, Tom, is that when you have the head of CERN making that type of announcement, you know, it, it absolutely should cause people to take note. Now, some have taken note. I was contacted by a group of scientists through a third party claiming that they're seeing entities. And when you hear that it's been shut down for a crumb or some other hokey excuse, no, that's not the case. I can tell you one time it was shut down. Somebody intervened, okay? I don't know who, but somebody intervened, obviously God, and used a group of individuals to do it. And interestingly enough, they claim they were able to gate in and gate out. Hmm. Some people won't believe that. But here's the thing. CERN is absolutely an affront to the living God. They, it, they actually believe, the Luciferians, Illuminati, that they're going to make war against God and they're going to prevail. They're going to prevail using fallen angel technology. Well, if it couldn't keep the fallen angels in heaven the first time, it's not going to seed the finals time. And this is what people don't understand. The end time battle is not just with guns and tanks and missiles and lasers and space-based weapon systems and alien technology. It is a supernatural weapon. Even the Bible teaches that the, the, the weapons of our, car, our, of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. A stronghold exists in the supernatural realm. And as we're dealing with CERN and Shiva, the destroyer, I find it interesting that the, the symbology of CERN is the Hindu deity Shiva, 
and the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, on the destruction, I think they're trying to get up to an interesting number, 13 trillion electron volts, 13 TEVs, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, when they rev to that TEV, I don't think they're going to understand and, and uh, be able to contain the unintended consequence. Now, again, if people would get this through their mind, especially Christians, we're seeing it with the persecution all over the world, that there is now the global release of a supernatural evil not known to this degree across the whole world. It's like everything is a, 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 a timepiece with all the sprockets, gears, balance wheels or imbalance wheels all functioning and it's all turning in, in in essence those giant tumblers on the vault of all the supernatural coming into our dimension i was just speaking to chris putnam earlier uh during the break and and i said oh what a joy it is to meet somebody who is a who's a, a fellow supernaturalist and he's mm -hmm. sitting off camera right now but the point being is is that what has happened is that the professing believers have lost all contact with the true nature of a holy God, of a God who's omnipotent, omniscient, and, and they've lost track of who they are in Jesus Christ. Because God's image in us, it's his likeness and image in, in Genesis, and now the very people that you and I are always talking about and against are saying they can do a better job at the recreation mm -hmm. of mankind than God did in the beginning. And they're promising eternal life, eternal sexual favor, and for the record, the biggest money going into robotics and AI are by that industry. Mm -hmm. That was tough for a lot of people to take until they read it and drudge, what, yesterday <laughs> or the day before. Now we've got longevity, and they basically made the statement, again, on the biggest newspapers of the world, man will not die. That sounds to me like somebody who was a, a snake telling Eve a lie that she believed, and now we all got to buy back what Adam and Eve surrendered in the Garden of Eden. And we're seeing a total assault, A-S-S-A-U-L-T, an insult against the person of Lord Jesus Christ. Anything else is fair game. Anyone else, can, you can worship the, the trees, frogs. You can do anything you want in this day and age except name the name of Jesus. The military has declared war on Jesus. They absolutely are kicking out. Now, why is this critical? Because those entities, we're talking about seducing and deceiving spirits. We're talking about a supernatural a uh, group of beings or entities that are now basically influencing the willing dupes on earth that they basically believe they're going to be gods. And you and I, in all the years, and it's kind of fun to come here and reflect back, the here being Missouri, um, or should I say Missouri? <laughs> Missouri. Missouri, okay. <laughs> I always get in trouble. If I say Madrid, they tell me it's Madrid. If I say Madrid, it's Madrid, okay? <laughs> well, anyway, here in Missouri... The point being is, is that we're now discussing events that are taking place half a world away. We're seeing, what are we seeing? We're seeing, just in this last week, we're seeing multitude 6.6, six, multitude 6, 6 6.8 earthquakes. So the harmonics of the very, if you will, the frequencies of God's creation. I tell people this. Remember this. God said, let there be light. Sound preceded light. And it's fascinating because even the Hebrews and some of antiquity teaches that God sang the worlds into existence. Mm -hmm. Now, that may be hard for people to believe, but Lucifer's job before he became Satan was the worship of God, mm -hmm. Ezekiel 28. And the thing is, the tablets and the pipes were his. That means he was a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. If you look at the power of music, there even the transformation of the human brain by specific frequencies, and Joe would know about this, 440A is not the good you know, tuning to be tuning to. A lot of people say the harmonics of creation should be closer to 432A. Well, that's not just a guitar tuning uh, uh, regimen. There's an actual purpose in that because one produces harmony, true harmony, I'm not talking about singing harmony, but I'm talking about, if you will, subatomic harmony right. versus dissonance. And so when you and I begin to talk about forbidden gates, I want to make this clear to people that the an ancients knew not only how to move these gates, but how to move between these gates. And even the former head of Skunk Works made the statement years ago, if the American people ever really knew that anything they can conceive of, we've already been there and done that. Well, with alien, quote, technology, and also, I would say this, the surrender of their humanity, the whole idea is just to fulfill the devil's desire, and that's to kill every last 
man, woman, and child on the face of the earth so that there would be no flesh left alive. And what does God say? That would happen. But for the, ex- for the sake of the elect, those days will be short. Yeah, and it's interesting that you bring up this whole question about sound waves uh, preceded creation and light. Uh, and, yet the, and, and, and what they're doing there at CERN is they're trying to discover subatomic particles and you know, shatter these protons and see what subatomic particles are made out of. But they're looking for things like quarks and they're looking for gluon. And you might recall that you and I, back when CERN was first going to launch years ago, we did a whole series of shows. In fact, I think they, I think they still make them available through Survivor Mall. I think that's called the, the Days of Noah. I remember but, that series. But, but, but that series, the Days of Noah, had a lot to do with, hey, folks, are getting ready to fire up a titanic machine by the name of CERN. And here's what they're looking for. And we talked then about they're going to want to try to open portals. They're trying to find gluon, though, is one of the subatomic theoretical uh, particles, or it works with those particles for the purposes of kind of holding everything together. You know, in, in the standard physics model, you have negative and, 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 and positive charged particles that ought to repel each other. They don't. So we try to understand what glues them together, what, what is glue on. And the best we know is it has something to do with sound waves. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. But if they can, but, but is the sound wave, because the New Testament also says, that everything is held together by Jesus, who was the incarnation of the Word of God, right? What it, why, why would they be trying to track down that element that is biblical, that called everything into creation, spoke, bara, let there be, and said, and caused, caused these particles to come together to create uh, uh, everything that we can see with our eyes, uh, and that is to, d- together held together by Jesus. You're talking about them wanting to make war. If they could somehow try to figure out the voice of God, in essence, they might figure out some way to dismantle it. But but who are, whose voice would they be following to try to do that? Who was it that said I'm, he's going to make war against God and still thinks that in the end time, somehow he's going to win? Now, there's one other thing that's very interesting about CERN, and that is they're, they're trying to find the theoretical particle graviton, but they believe not only is graviton po- capable of moving into other dimensions, this is part of string theory, but they think that if it can, then they might use it as a way to communicate, put it together like strings of zeros and ones in computer language or something, and communicate with whatever is over there on the other side. And you, you've said this, and it isn't really tongue-in-cheek, you've said this in the past, you know, we're, we're sending this message, here we are, come and eat us for lunch, right? Uh, very concerning stuff, and it's happening right while we're doing this programming. Well, the app, you know, here's a great definition of lust. It's not original, but I believe it's truly inspired. The appetite of demons expressed through humans. And the appetite for power. Uh, interviewing over the years, I've interviewed a lot of people, some very, very wealthy people, uh, you know, in the B realm, billionaires. And they said, it's not about the money, Steve. It's about the power. And what power gives us is control. And that's the, that's the thing that basically... Satan sells his disciples on power and control. What's interesting is even when I get emails from some very nefarious, openly worshiping Satan, uh, Satanists, they'll make the statement, Russ Dizdar is telling the truth. There's power in the blood. So the gluon, okay, I believe gravity is a pressure and not a wave. If you think about it, a pressure, if you're going to hold something together, you have to use a form of pressure, okay? Take your, your index finger or your trigger finger and your thumb, put it together, that's a pressure. Well, I believe that literally God is the Colossians 1, 16, 17, is the pressure that holds it together. So what they're trying to do is on a beyond subatomic, I would say subdimensional level, they're trying to blast apart creation. They are trying, and and this is their last ditch effort. This is truly war on the saints, but even more than that, it's war on God. And it's kind of like the chemists, you've heard the joke, the chemists are arguing and bragging about, you know, look, they don't need God. Look what they were able to do. They took this dirt, they combined it with this substance, this substance, and a voice from heaven says, get your own dirt, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And so the point being is, is that everything that they're dealing with are forces. 
and they're already, let's just say this, whatever realm of composition they exist in, whether they're a holograph or a multi-dimensional, I, I, I try and share this on the radio sometimes, Tom, it's very frustrating. What most classic physicists learn is what they're told mm -hmm. in universities. Sure. But what really exists is the, the physics of the ancients transcends and supersedes it all. It's like harmonic levitation. The only way that, and when I've been studying the giants and their nasal pharyngeal passages, I cannot find instances where you're not equating frequency, in other words, the shrieks or whatever, of, of, of sound or specific sounds generated that offset gravity. It's kind of like, if you will, it changes the molecular structure. And as I was sharing earlier on Tim Alberino's Gen 6 expedition to Peru, they actually found a secular uh, engineer whose composite and structures, you know, expertise is beyond question. He's saying, look, I don't know who did it, but whoever did it was able to change the literal mass of this, the, basically the granite, you know, mm -hmm. or the composition of the giant stones, and make them actually pour into each other. And that was the word he used, poured in. If you take your knuckles and put them together, obviously you can mash them together, but if it's offset and I can get this one to flow into that mm -hmm. one without, quote, chipping, uh, you know, and by the way, Hebrew slaves did not do it with cords, okay? <laughs> I, I mean, I got a guy giving me a treatise on how the he Hebrews built the uh, pyramids, and I said, good luck. You go to the <laughs> Step Pyramid at Saqqara, and brother, that's like thousands of years before that, or the erosion of, of the Sphinx. So I think we have answers for people, but I think they've got to, no pun intended, but it is a good, a good statement, they need to discern the times. Discerning of spirit is a gift of the Holy Ghost. You cannot live in this world without God's gifting. And you were raised in the assembly of God, I was raised in the assembly of God, and we can both look back and see definable supernatural miracles that we watch take place. Mm -hmm. We can watch the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and, and miracles, and see, that's the thing that, that's lacking. You talk to a true follower of the Prince of Darkness, and they'll tell you about the power, they'll tell you about the supernatural events that take place, they'll tell you all kinds of stuff, and you'll sit there and go, boy, they, they believe their Lord, meaning little L, the devil, to give them what they believe for, yet the Christians won't believe the God of heaven and what he's promised them. So discernment is going to be probably the reason why so many people perish for lack of knowledge. Because, again, in going up against things that they cannot define in their own context, they cannot understand no matter how they try and wrap around their brain, because it's a, it's a question of spiritual discernment. We can't get this stuff, I believe, without the help of the Holy Ghost. And then to keep it in a biblical perspective where the Word of God, and you said it earlier, God esteems His Word above His name. Jesus was the Word, okay? So what's a word? Well, a spoken word produce the written word, mm -hmm. because we know that the prophets and the uh, apostles and everything, they, they wrote what, as the Lord moved him. David, quote, you know, those, a lot of David's psalms are in a harmony and rhyme, okay? Mm -hmm. Even the rhyme and the harmony combined together, that's a sonar, th uh, right. excuse me, a sonic issue. So I think this is fascinating. I think where can we go except on Skywatch to talk about yeah. the majesty of God using the contemporary weapon of the fallen ones to try and go against God. And I, I read my Bible and it says, you know, the word of God says Jesus is going to take with the sword of his spirit and, you know, with the breath of his mouth, you know. Right. And so that's what's exciting to me. But in the meantime, people will be, how do I say this, overwhelmed emotionally. They'll be psychologically devastated. They'll be overpowered intellectually. They won't have the right biblical understanding to deal with this stuff, and that's what we do. Whether it's you and Chris writing the books you're doing, uh, the whole Vatican card, and again, I want to make this clear. What's fascinating to me is, is that the very same people that you guys have chronicled that at Mount Graham and all the stuff going on there is the same group of people that in the last two to three months, as Tim Alberino's gone halfway around the world two different times, is they're always there, and, they, and as I told you, being spied on, you know, I always like to, I told Joe this, it's always amazing to me to see how much trouble we can get in <laughs> in such a limited amount of time. But the point is, when you're dealing with core reality, this is core stuff. This is the very fabric and essence of creation. 
people who have twisted it and distorted it really don't want you to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Somebody said the most dangerous thing is to be right when the government's wrong. Well, and, and, and now let's take another step here because you also wrote a book called Xenogenesis. We're going to make this book available. In fact, I'll just go ahead and tell you that you can get a copy of Steve's book, Xenogenesis. What's it about? We're going to tell you that in just a moment. Uh, this book is huge like all the other books that Steve produces. It retails for $40. Um, if you would like to get a copy of that during this program, you can call the number that will be on the screen or you can visit skywatchtv.com to get a copy of Xenogenesis. And if you do, we're going to throw in my inferior attempt at writing on the same subject matter. Uh, and what is that subject matter? We're going to give you that one free. So both of those books would normally be about $60. We're going to give that to you for $40. Um, the subject matter is transhumanism. Now, what in the world does transhumanism have to do with portals? Well, I've always believed that when the watchers came down in the days of Noah's, uh, yeah, in the days of Jared, in Noah's great grandfather, uh, in, in essence, they were using human material, blending it with animal material, creating a, a life form outside of the divine order. But why would they want to do that? Well, Peter and Jude both quote the book of Enoch. Absolutely. It's saying that their purpose for doing that was they wanted to leave their fixed habitation, their place in heaven. And they saw that new biological construct as a portal, a way, a method to move from their reality into our three-dimensional reality. So isn't it interesting that in a way, it isn't just metaphysical store, you know, gateways, stargates, portals, thin places where the barrier is, is thin between some other dimensional reality and our reality. But these entities can also use biology. By corrupting what God made, they can create a unit into which they can extend themselves into our three dimensions. So in that sense, that too is a kind of portal. That's what you wrote about in Xenogenesis. That's what I wrote about in, well, the whole title, Forbidden Gates. We're talking about a gateway, a doorway. Now, you were telling me a moment ago that just today, uh, the Chinese have revealed that they've already started germline genetic engineering, which is kind of really the taboo line that you're not supposed to cross over in human genetic engineering, right? Right, and can I say something from everything I've been told, everything I know, and I couldn't know this without the people who have access to it, they're so far beyond what they're admitting to. They are so far beyond. Okay, it was tough for people when I first went on talk radio, the short version, 20 years ago to accept that human beings could be cloned, okay? Mm -hmm. It was really tough. People say, well, I can't read that popular science. Well, of course you can't, you know, and I'll leave off what I should say after that. <laughs> but the point being is this is, this is we got to keep this right, <laughs> Skywatch. I don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah. The point being is, is that they don't understand that ed we're so far advanced, okay? I asked a special operations general, active duty. That's so it's not some guy retired 40 years ago with the top secret clearance, okay? I said, how far are you realistically? He says, when you take the alien technology, we're thousands of years in advance. Thousands. Well, how can you be thousands of years in advance when you're still dealing with rockets that you have to use uh, uh, chemical propulsion? Well, that's only for the public. You see, there's a giant slate of hand going on. There's, this, is, this is the magician's, uh, 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 what would you say, world of illusion, politics and what you see that we hear, you know, the wars and all the things they do. That's just, that's just to keep the masses distracted and extract money from them. But the real, real advances in propulsion, in ge human genetics, you know. I remember a man, I tried to lead him to the Lord. I could not do it, I failed. He was an illuminist, his dad was a Texas, a super rich guy, and the point being is, when you see a grown man and also work for a certain intelligence agency as somebody that takes out bad people, the point being is when you see a grown man telling you that there are genetic experiments in secret government labs, and this guy's a tough guy who, who bragged about all the evil he's done, and yet he weeps and weeps like a little baby, and, and, and I tried, I couldn't. He'd gone over the line, but he did want his son. But he just said this. He said, no matter what they tell you, it's way beyond that. It's way beyond that. And he talked about at least the literal island of Dr. Moreau. Well, 
but you know, Steve, if people have a hard time believing that fact, um, the, you know, last year, the Academy of Medical Sciences, which is Britain's equivalent of our FDA, put out a book 150 pages long, saying that literally thousands and thousands of what they call ACHM animals containing human materials. Yes. Now, they weren't just talking about embryos that had, you know, 1% human genetic material because they said that these things had been raised to maturity. They said some of them borderline human sentience. Right. So this is, a, this, is, this is advanced technology. But they also talked about very disturbing things about how some of these creatures, they feared, they said, some of these creatures might also be able to procreate with regular humans. So we're t we are literally now talking about <laughs> the island of Dr. Moreau. We are. And this is not weekly world news. This is, you know, this is a highly level placed uh, body of scientists that work for the British government that put this out. And th interestingly, they weren't calling for a prohibition on the science. They were saying that there ought to be a regulatory, international regulatory body. Well, that's what they're talking about now today. China admits that they've been doing germline genetic engineering. You hear this again. Well, we need an international regulatory committee to get everybody to agree to a moratorium. It's never going to happen, right? If the, ti if the science exists, we got one minute left in the show. If the science exists, uh, you and I both know that this is already happening. You got like 45 seconds, Steve, to tell me uh, what we can make of this. The Garden of Eden is now as real the temptation as it was in Adam and Eve's day. It is now. They are trying to create. They, the Luciferian scientific make war on God community is literally trying to do away with all humanity. You've warned about it in Singularity. I've warned about it. We've both written about it. It's not a future event. It's happening now. The wars that are getting ready to happen as Russia, China, everything, everything's basically going, if you will, ballistic. It's like uh, nuclear rods going into a reactor. And the point is, is I don't know when it explodes, but it's just about to explode. As it explodes in the natural realm, it will explode in the negative spiritual and realm. And so uh, we literally have entered into a fulfillment of end times prophecy as it was in the days of Noah. Yes, sir. As you've so often said, and of course you've wrote about in your work. Steve, sir, been wonderful. The last four weeks being able to do these programs with you, recording programs that are playing out over a four week uh, period. I uh, hope you'll come back again uh, sometime soon and do it again. Keep us updated on what's going on with Gen 6 Productions, Timothy Alberino, the documentary series. I know that if people want to contact you through stevequail.com, maybe they can even help you fund some of that right, expedition. They can be a partner in it, and we need that because. Yeah, we're, we're, what we're doing is, Tom, six to eight episodes. Each episode can cost pretty close to six figures. We basically uh, are on the tr trail of the true Atlantis. And by the way, Atlantis was destroyed for their genetic modification experiments. I'm sorry that we're out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, join us again next time on Skywatch TV. Thanks, Steve, for being you, with Tom. me. Well, the late and the late friend of both of ours, David Flynn, when he would write about the Uroboros, I was interesting that we would be talking about this because it, CERN in the dimension of the particle accelerator is, is a type, actually, of the Uroboros. And the image that I was given one day when I was just praying about this out of the blue is imagine a, a time tunnel with two funnels uh, CERN being on the earthly side and the Ouroboros being the heavenly side. And, and the Ouroboros, for those that don't understand, is this serpent swallowing its tail. It's, yes. a, it's an ancient symbol. It's an ancient symbol, but it's based on the Milky Way right. and its motion. But the point being, Tom, is that when you have the head of CERN making that type of announcement, you know, it, it absolutely should cause people to take note. Now, some have taken note. I was contacted by a group of scientists through a third party claiming that they're seeing entities 
And when you hear that it's been shut down for a crumb or some other hokey excuse, no, that's not the case. I can tell you one time it was shut down. Somebody intervened, okay? I don't know who, but somebody intervened, obviously God, and used a group of individuals to do it. And interestingly enough, they claim they were able to gate in and gate out. Hmm. Some people won't believe that. But here's the thing. CERN is absolutely an affront to the that there is now the global release of a supernatural evil not known to this degree across the whole world. It's like everything is a, 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 a timepiece with all the sprockets, gears, balance wheels or imbalance wheels all functioning, and it's all turning in, in, in essence, those giant tumblers on the vault of all the supernatural coming into our dimension. I was just speaking to Chris Putnam earlier uh, during the break, and, and I said, oh, what a joy it is to meet somebody who is a, who's a, a fellow supernaturalist, and he's mm-hmm. sitting off camera right now. But the point being is, is that what has happened is that the professing believers have lost all contact with the true nature of a holy God, of a God who's omnipotent, omniscient, and, and they've lost track of who they are in Jesus Christ. Because God's image in us, it's his likeness and image in, in Genesis. And now the very people that you and I are always talking about and against are saying they can do a better job at the recreation mm-hmm. of mankind than God did in the beginning. And they're promising eternal life, eternal sexual favor, and for the record, the biggest money going into robotics and AI are by that living God. They, it, they actually believe, the Luciferians, Illuminati, that they're going to make war against God and they're going to prevail. They're going to prevail using fallen angel technology. Well, if it couldn't keep the fallen angels in heaven the first time, it's not going to seed the finals time. And this is what people don't understand. The end time battle is not just with guns and tanks and missiles and lasers and space-based weapon systems and alien technology. It is a supernatural weapon. Even the Bible teaches that the, the, the weapons of our, car, our, of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. A stronghold exists in the supernatural realm. And as we're dealing with CERN and Shiva, the destroyer, I find it interesting that the, the symbology of CERN is the Hindu deity Shiva and the cosmic dance of creation and destruction. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, on the destruction, I think they're trying to get up to an interesting number, 13 trillion electron volts, 13 TEVs, okay? Mm-hmm. Well, when they rev to that TEV, I don't think they're going to understand and, and uh, be able to contain the unintended consequence. Now, again, if people would get this through their mind, especially Christians, we're seeing it with the persecution all over the world. We get from there to here, but we're here. You know? Yeah, uh, so it's, which is interesting because we've been talking about portals. We've been talking about CERN. Somehow we kind of create our own traversable wormholes <laughs> during a program. We've been space and then come back to the beginning somehow. Uh, and, and speaking of that, that is what we left off the last program, talking about portals. Now, you've written these books. Uh, your newest book is Little Creatures, uh, and it's associated with that idea that there are doorways and that things can and do come through those doorways. You and I both believe not only do they come through the doorways, but a time is coming when prophecy says those gates are going to be fully opened, and then it's going to be like the floodgates of literally hell on earth is going to spill over into the earth. Do you think that what's going on right now at CERN, as we're sitting here talking, CERN has fired up its engines, it's, it's getting ready to conduct the most powerful experiments ever done on the face of the earth by colliding literally hundreds of millions of particles together at just under the speed of light. But, but CERN's own director, he said, you know, we, we may open a doorway and we may send something through it or something may come through from a parallel universe. What in the world are these guys trying to accomplish? Angels waging war in the unseen realm. Global events fulfilling biblical prophecy. Eternal life. What lies beyond mortality? From analyzing the paranormal from a biblical worldview to the discussion of cutting-edge science and technology, 
Conspiracy. Discovery. Special investigative reports. Unafraid to explore the challenging issues facing humanity. Welcome to another edition of Skywatch TV. Hi folks, this is Tom Horn once again from Skywatch Television and somehow, some way, we were able to con my good friend Steve Quayle into staying here and doing another program. Actually, you couldn't con Steve into doing anything. He stayed by his good graces. Hi Steve, good to see you Tom, again. Tom, well I'm excited to be here. Now, I don't mind, you know, I, I'm serious. I think you and I could sit here and talk for like <laughs> eight hours straight and people would be fascinated because we'd start here, go to another point in the universe, come back <laughs> where we were and we would be all over the place but by the end of the show people would be going how did they